Good evening, everybody. It's David Pulsover again at pelicanpreps.com. I'm joined by, and I'd like everybody just to wave their hand so they can see it, Jared Rozier, who works with me at Rivals.com, Coach David Franklin from Haynesville, Coach Greg Salter from Covington, Coach Jess Curtis from Manny, and the newbie, Coach Daniel Luquette over at Hindville High School. Coaches, and you know, it's been a very interesting week with the LHSA coming out saying, you know, this is the plan, you know, knock on wood right now with COVID of we're going to start in October. And, you know, I can report that it looks like it's going to be your week three opponent is going to be your week one opponent. That's what we're thinking right now and a 16 team playoff. But let's start positive first before we start talking how to deal with everything else. Start with Coach Franklin. Coach Franklin, how good is it just to be out on the field practicing again and getting that sweat going? Well, in a way, it's still a little disappointing because you still don't know what you're looking forward to. But, you know, we only did two days this week because I, I still think we're a long ways off. But the, the two days that we had, especially our first day, our kids were really excited cool. just to get, a, you know, just to put a helmet on and go out on the field and, run around, we did some seven on seven stuff and some stuff that we weren't able to do, you know, before we could practice, but um, it, it was good. I mean, it kind of gave the kids some hope, gave the coaches some hope, and it, it just felt more like where we're supposed to be at this time of the year. So it, it was good. Coach Salter, what is a, a Covington High practice looking like right now as opposed to how this would be a year ago? You know, just kind of give us a description. It's, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the, the focus, it, it, you know, is on the player safety and stuff and uh, not so much the X's and O's uh, right now. It's just trying to get everything organized, um, get the kids where they're supposed to be, trying to keep them that safe distance, trying to adhere to all the rules that are, uh, you know, being put forth by the LHSA. So it's, de it's definitely different, um, but, you know, it, it, it's still uh, within those white lines. Uh, you know, it's still that regulation football field. They're able to throw helmets on, um, able to run around, able to compete and, you know, use a ball now. So, uh, you know, while it is a little different as far as the contact aspect and the, the full group work, um, you know, it does still feel, you know, somewhat like football. And I'll echo what Coach just said. Uh, you know, I think the most important thing is that uh, it generates a little hope within these guys because uh, everything is uh, – you know, up until this point, it seems so far away. And I know it continues to get pushed back, but, um, you know, as long as there's, uh, you know, they're, they're making the efforts and there's something on the horizon, uh, you know, our kids are eager to, you know, get to work and, and have that hope with them. So, Coach Curtis, is it really just you only can worry about the day in, right in front of your face? You can't worry about what a season may look like. It's just let's go try to practice as hard as we can today. Yeah, that, that's what I've told the kids throughout the summer. And now, you know, we're going to try to get better every day. And, and you know, you try to spin it, a positive spin to them and that maybe, uh, you know, we're getting extra time here. This is extra time that, that we can work on the little things. And, and uh, you know, I told them that it can make us better if we approach it that way, you know. And that's what we are as football coaches, always dealing with adversity. And this, is, this has been our share of that. But uh, it was good to get out there this week, though, get the helmets on again and running around, doing seven on seven, just like Coach said. Man, it started to feel like a little bit of more normalcy around here, Manny. Coach Luquette, you know, I'll ask you the last question before I pass it off to Jared. How, I mean, for you taking over and it's your first year being a head coach, how important is it just to be out there, no matter how it is? If you've got a six-foot stick between them, if you're not in pads, you know, just how important is it for the future of Hanville football to just be out there this week? You know, I, we, the one thing that we worry about a lot is it's just, you know, everything that's going on in their life outside of just football. So it's an opportunity for those guys to get on the field. And, and if, you know, hour and a half, two hours, however long we're out there, just a chance to forget about what's going on in the world. Um, and we really try to try to preach that, you know, we we do our best of, of keeping keeping the six feet and make sure we're doing the things we need to do. But it's just it's just so good to have that family oriented uh, atmosphere out there and having the kids there. And, and, and our coaching staff has done a really good job of just trying to be positive about everything and and just being pretty honest with them. You know, what we know is, is what they know. And, you know, I want them to hear things from me before they hear it from anything on Twitter and, and and other sources like that, because, you know, at the end of the day, it's, this is this is about them. You know, it's, it's their season and it's it's something that they've been looking forward to since, you know, since we got knocked out in the last last year. But 
just trying to keep it normal, trying to keep it like it's been, you know, in, in the past and, and just trying to keep it a little fun and, and just trying to keep them on edge, you know, not, not the monotony is, is something that scares me a little bit moving forward. Jared, I'm passing it over to you, man. Yeah, you know, I'm curious what, what some of your reactions were the last couple of days to that plan that was released yesterday morning, um, the October 8th target date to start, but uh, knowing that Mr. Bonine referenced it as being kind of ambitious and that it is kind of flexible and, and how to approach that when a, a date gets put out there, but it's still a very uh, fluid date, as he mentioned. I, I can tell you for myself, I was, I was happy to get a date just to know, you know, whether or not, uh, and, and I know that might be not to be the case. It might be pushed back again, but to have that date to be able to, you know, alter our schedule based off of that, whether we need to slow down, whether we needed to speed things up. Um, so it was important for us, um, you know, to, to, to have, uh, you know, something firm. Um, again, I know it can change, but uh, we can adapt off of that. So, I, you know, I appreciate it, uh, you know, getting, getting something like that. Yeah, I mean the big the big thing too for us was was you know again getting the date and understanding that we need to slow down a little bit and pace ourselves because I think that's what most of us coaches are thinking now. Now how can we game plan this to where we're not burning kids out before we even get to you know shoulder I mean to we before we start uh, hitting people you know so I think the date's good it kind of lets us coaches know like Coach Franklin was talking about how he's going to try to pace his kids you know to where we're you know, they're ready to go whenever uh, we get to October and hopefully that we're at that phase where we can play football. But I think the date was just good for us coaches for pacing how we're going to practice from here on now. Yeah, I know for us it was the biggest thing was is that, you know, we were trying to contemplate when we wanted to go pads, you know. So to being as that October date now, you can kind of say, okay, we got 21 days, no rush of getting the pads, and you almost kind of ramp it up a little bit when you get to phase three because let's be honest, We've been to phase two three times already. So what's to say we get to phase three and we just roll through it? You know, obviously everybody in this room and across the state wants that to happen. But I think we're really going to look at that phase three date, um, you know, that Oct that August 28th date. And if he pushes us forward, then getting the pads and really start kind of ramping up as we, you know, push forward. Coach, I agree with Coach. It's, it's, I agree with Coach. It's good, to, it's good to have a date. You know, you got something to look forward to. But – I think, like you said, the the having you know looking forward to getting into phase three where you can start doing something different. I think that's that's the main thing. Step um, towards that date. <laughs> we've got four different parishes represented here, and parishes that po possibly have different policies when it comes to COVID nineteen. What are I'd love to get all y'all's responses on what are you hearing of if we have a season if fans will be allowed in the stands at this point we can only worry about what we know today so what are you hearing in terms of if the if it's going to be a parish decision is it going to be a school school board decision what are you hearing in your respective areas so for us we heard it was a it was going to be a district thing um basically up to our school our school board and for us I, i'll be honest with you i don't know what that looks like because you know, we sell season tickets, been doing it for 30, 40 years. So you say 25%, 50%, it's a nightmare. I'm just glad I'm a football coach and not in charge of, of season tickets. So, but that's what I had heard. I don't know if y'all have heard anything different on that, on that aspect. That's, that's what I've heard. You know, I think it's going to be a school board type deal for us. And, you know, we're only football playing school in our parish. Uh, you know, I, I feel good about it. You know, being here in Manny's a lot different being in New Orleans, or Baton Rouge, you know, what that looks like. And so, That'll help us. I think it's you're going to see it's going to be a school board decision, probably across the board. Uh, same, same with us. You know, uh, uh, you know, I just heard you know whatever Mr. Bonine said uh, the other day as far as the uh, the parish and your school system deciding. Um, I haven't been told um, at all that that we won't have people in the stands. Uh, that hasn't been mentioned to us yet. Um, and it's, again, it's something that can certainly change. But, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, whenever we get into phase four and, and you know, back to playing, um, you know, I, I'm assuming that means everything's back to normal. That's, that's, that's my deal is I think we're all worried about 
I mean, you wor- we're worried about too much because we're worried about fans and buses and practices and games and all this. Well, and it doesn't matter. We're, we're not going to start playing games until we're back to normal in phase four. So I don't think it matters about fans. If we're normal, if we're in phase four, I'm assuming everybody can come. So I don't think that that, that really matters. So I, that's just my understanding of it. I mean, phase four, whatever that is, is normal. So if we're normal, I don't see why we can put 40 kids on a bus and everybody can come to a game. That's just my take on it. I don't know. I may be wrong. but mm-hmm. Jared, go ahead, man. Yeah, um, I'm I'm not sure of each of your specific schedules, but I know some schools have some out-of-state games on their schedule. Some schools have some games against schools from other areas of the state that I think they've – some coaches have heard some concerns about that that much travel, heard some concerns whether it be parents or, or, or school officials. Um, do any of you guys foresee any scheduling adjustments that you have to kind of – I and know, fix at I, this point. I, I know. Um, I know we don't. In anticipation. I know we don't. We do. So I'll let you guys handle that. We do because our if we start week three, our first opponent is an Arkansas school, so we're we're in a bind already. So, but it depends on when we start. You know, for us, for us, we're going to lose our our favorite game, which is Button Heads with Union Parish, you know, and that's – our fans are already down in the mouth about that. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, we're just hopeful that we can get, you know, that North Dakota game because that's another big rival game for us, you know. And so that's the only thing as far as concerns, no. We just want to – we just want to play these teams on our schedules. Yeah, we, we, we have no change. I mean, we lose uh, – you know, we lose opportunity to travel a little bit and to play Denham and Mandeville. But other than that, I mean, you know, we got a buy later on in our schedule, which is going to be there. So we, we, we're we going to be starting one game out of district and then we'll be able to run through the entire district, which is, I think it's good for some of those schools like the Central, the Lafouche Parish Schools and Terrebonne Parish Schools, which is good for us. But um, my biggest concern for them is they haven't been, they haven't been doing anything that we've been doing. They've been shut down for the last two weeks. They just start practicing for the first time on Monday. So, you know, and, you know, I just, it, it's crazy. It's just, the level of what parishes are doing down here is it, it, because we're all in between New Orleans and Baton Rouge, which are hotbeds. So everybody does their own thing based off their own kids. And so, but the, other than the schedule part, no, nah, we're not going to have any changes. My question for you guys, and again, I always appreciate your time. I got one more question after this is we don't know what things are going to look like numbers wise once all the kids are back in school. I know Coach Franklin, you said school's coming back soon for you guys up there. Have you kind of, you're seeing a lot on the college level, you know, mask up so we can play. The players begging people to do that kind of stuff. Have you spoken to your kids at all about that to try to be the leaders of, hey, spread the word that, you know, believe in the virus or not or whatever, but please mask up so we can keep the number down because we want to play football. Have you tried to talk to them about spreading that to their classmates throughout the school? Because we, again, when everybody's bunched up, not everybody, you know, walking down the Covington High hallway, for example, is going to be six feet apart. You know, I'd love to know y'all's approach of what you told your kids about that. We talked about it a little bit. We talked about it a little this afternoon and that just being a leader in the school and how school is going to be different and all that. But, I mean, it's different for us. Small town is different. You know, we, we, we've had, you know, workouts all summer. We just ran two groups. We don't have 40 kids, so we can run two groups. But – when they leave here, all of our kids are down here in the basketball court playing basketball. And so, you know, we've kind of been lucky. I think a small school is a little bit different, you know, than, than larger schools. But uh, absolutely, we, we've encouraged it. We're going to continue to encourage it because that's what's going to make a difference as far as whether you're going to be able to play or not. And then also not whether you're going to be able to play, but when you get to play, you know, keeping your kids healthy and continuing and having everybody out there to play, I think that's a, that's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, I, that's we, we've told our kids – you know, the, the people that handle this the best, you know, you, you're going to have to be good, and you're also mm-hmm. going to have to be able to handle this situation well. You know, and that means, you know, masking up and sanitizing and just doing the things we need to do to be successful and keep kids out there playing, you know. So, again, I think the team that handles this situation the best is going to be your champion at the end. Well, we um we started school today. So, uh, we've had our conversation 
over the last week, but our school was split into two, two days. Uh, so basically, you know, I have probably 140 kids in the program, 70 of them come on a Monday, the other 70 come on a Tuesday. So it's, it's eerily, it's weird, man. It's, it's, it's weird. It's almost like, you know, Pondo, which is a big five day school. We're, we're three, a numbers on a Monday, three, a numbers on a Tuesday, but, um, You'd be surprised, man. I think these kids want a sense of normalcy. And I'm not just talking about football players. I'm talking about just students in general. Um, I don't think they enjoy being away from each other. And I, I know that a lot of them see each, each other in the neighborhood. And, but it's just a different atmosphere when you come to school. And I think that, you know, I know just observing today, there was not an issue with the six feet and, the, and, and wearing masks. I think these kids are just tired of being quarantined to their house or to, to you know, an aunt's house. I just think they want to get back to normal just like we do. Um, and when it's not just football players, and I think, I think you see that um, five months is a long time. So I, I just think that that's, that's enough motivation for all of them. Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, all of our kids, you know, having gone through the summer, um, you know, I don't want to speak for the other coaches, but I mean, our kids all kind of had have a head start, you know, of, of you know, uh, learning the rules and, and learning how to adhere to them and uh, how to adapt and to adjust to, to the situation at hand. So. Um, you know, we expect them, you know, to hit the ground running the first day of school and, uh, you know, and then follow all the policies and, and to set that example. Jared, fire, fire away, man. Um, with football being backed up, potentially we're talking about even through Christmas, uh, any initial reactions on the potential overlap if basketball doesn't get pushed back or if they get into wrestling situations potentially or, or any kind of multi-sport dynamics that come into play with, with football pushed back at least this much? You really I think what my mindset is, you know, whenever they tell us to go, you know, we'll be ready to go. Um, I'm not going to complain, um, you know, just, just so long as these kids get the opportunity to play. And if it happens to – be a situation where it's running into other sports. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate I have a great relationship, whether it's with our basketball coach, our track coach, our uh, baseball coaches. I, you know, I, I think we can work something out because at this point, it's just about getting uh, each and every kid out on the field. Um, you know, if it, if it means, you know, um, uh, a little bit less, uh, you know, one less win or two less wins than – so be it, just so long as these guys are playing. Um, and that, that's the way I feel about it. I totally agree with Coach. I think that's the main thing is just giving them an opportunity. But, you know, at a small school, when I had to keep saying that, but it does, we have several kids that will play basketball and baseball. It really affects us and it affects coaches because we have – which our basketball coach, our base, they're all football coaches. So, But I, I think, you know, there's nothing's going to be – there's no ideal situation. We just need an opportunity, like you said. And, and I think that's the main thing is just giving the kids a chance to play something. Yeah, I'm, I'm following Roddy. I'm a coach, Frank. And that's what, that was exactly what I was going to say. 2A school, our kids are multi-sport athletes. Uh, uh, half of them play basketball, the other half of baseball guys, you know, and we, we encourage them to do that. Basketball coach does a great job of, of backing his season up every year. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure he'd be willing to do that if Manny was playing in New Orleans again, you know. And, and, and so, uh, you know, I think it's good. I think I can uh, handle New Orleans the end of Jan uh, December, too, if, if we're lucky. You missed your whole season. And, and then for me, man, I, I just – until I see a calendar for them, I, I, it's not, it's, I guess it's a worry that I don't even want to have to try to, to worry about, <laughs> you know. Uh, I mean, the thing they sent out just had three sports on it, so that's all I can really worry about. And, I'm like, coach, most of those guys coach for me. So at the end of the day, they want to be in, they want to be in the dome just as much as we do. So if it's backing their season up or, or doing something at the end before, I, you know, but I, I just, the day at a time, man, I, I told my, somebody asked me today, I said, how is it? I said, it's like riding a stationary bike. I'm sweating my ass off doing a hard, doing a really good job. But the next thing I'd look around, I haven't moved one bit, you know? So that's kind of, one day at a time for me. My wrestling coach, he could just wait a little while. <laughs> I've got one more question, fellas. And again, as always, I appreciate your time. I don't know if you saw it, but we've got the possibility, as I get texted by Coach Danio, he wants to go in an hour. We'll get him the next time around. Um, 
there's a proposal to just for this this uh, prep season, bring everybody back, bring mom and dad back together again, private and public high schools, you know, for state championships in football. Now, granted, I will say this before you say anything. We only have four public school coaches here, so we don't have a private school to represent themselves. I'd love to just get your thoughts on that proposal, and is it something you you would possibly be for as a one-time thing for the 2020 season? I, I mean, again, I just – I don't care. Um, just so long as our kids are playing football, uh, whatever they need to do to ensure that these young men – get an opportunity to play, whether it's their senior year or what have you. Um, whether the, you know, we can get the, the cheerleaders and the dance team and the band back in the stands, whatever they need to do to do that, um, you know, we'll go with the flow. Um, and I mean, I just, again, I, I just want the kids on the field and be able to play. Isn't the proposal to bring back the, all the championships under one roof, is that what it is, David? I thought the proposal was everybody's together. Jared, you might be able to correct me if I'm wrong here. No, I, I think it's I think it's just a, ven, a venue standpoint, as opposed to last year where it was separated in different locations. They'd be in one building potentially, not not actually playing one another. Hold on, let's see. I got Robin's story up right here to rejoin champions as a part of one year done. No, this is it's in it's the uh, Eddie Bonine and David Federico revealed select schools have been invited to rejoin LHSA championship events in 20, 2021 as a part of a one year COVID exception dot designed to help simplify school operations. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Go, go ahead, Jared. like go, go, going back going back to basically like the nine championships in the dome together, not like five state championships ah, at okay. the school. All right. Well, then y'all forget it's, about it's, my – it, It's more like meshing the logistics to take that extra of finding a site off of the plate of, of more people because the contracts are already in place for some of these other – I got you. Everybody knows where my views are on that. Jared, go ahead. Last question of the night. No, man. I mean, I, I think it was a good conversation and uh, it, was, it was good to hear from, from everybody of kind of where we are right now. All right. Well, awesome. Coach David Franklin, Coach Greg Salter, Coach Jess Curtis, Coach Daniel Luquette, Coach Jeff Tannehill, wherever he is out in cyberspace from Neville. We appreciate y'all's time as always, fellas. Thank you very much. Sir, Thanks, thank you. Thanks, dude. Thank you, guys.